Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary Holt from Exodus and formerly from Slayer, and you're listening to The Razor's Edge. This is Matt with The Razor's Edge. I am here at Arctangent Festival with Luke from Pupil Slicer, Bass Slicer, as you've just That's seen me. Man. Yeah. How was it up there yesterday? It was quite the whirlwind. Wasn't it just, yeah. <laughs> um, the sound, the team were really good. The Arctangent like, crew and that are always impeccable. Um, yeah, it was really good, really just really positive feeling from the audience. Personal highlight for me is that, so with regards to metal call outs and interaction with crowds, mm. I try and like just look at like old school hip hop stuff because it's yeah. just more fun and a bit light hearted and it's obviously not genre specific so it's, people go oh that's funny. No, so for a, for a while I've tried to do like the, <laughs> I say pupil, you say slicer, yeah, yeah. pupil, slicer, pupil, yeah, like yeah. do that like when I say mm, you say uh, all that right, that's like, cla- that's like classic hip hop shit and I've done it a couple of times and it's just fallen on its ass. <laughs> uh, but you gotta be brave and try these things yeah, out. Indeed. But I hit it yesterday and it actually popped quite hard. So I was like, yes, that I, was a good personal. I uh, think you had a good <laughs> slot in the uh, afternoon slash evening where people were kind of merry enough to- Yeah, uh, people are still on it a little in. bit. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think metal can take itself too seriously sometimes, you know? But like, you know what? Be serious with your fucking music, yes. right? But that doesn't mean to say that you need to be very haughty or right. <laughs> super serious about it because let's face it man we've seen enough bands of five dudes wearing combats being well serious like mm-hmm. it's, it's been done isn't it like, and that's not kate's vibe no so that's why i personally always try to wear like quite cla- crazy clothes or like mm-hmm. you know i love the tie dye range that you guys have got as well like there's um there's a couple of girls in my camp who like oh, they got, who, who wore it last year and now now they're wearing it this year like you know um, what, like, in a way, it's that I actually love it because it's really easy to see who's got your merch, so I can yeah. just thank everyone that I see, because right, yeah. I appreciate it. But, like, the tactic there was to just try and uh, stick out yeah. against all the black shirts. I think uh, I really like metal merch that isn't black. I mean, I'm wearing a yellow festival t-shirt right now. It was either that or the black one, and nice. I was like, well, I'm just going to go for the yellow one. Because yeah. we've all got enough black shirts, right? I've got way too many like more than i should have more than me i could too, ever man. possibly wear on a me regular too. but um but yeah that's um this is how we roll i guess um might feel like a stupid question because i know you were here last year so i'm going to kind of rephrase it i right, like to ask bands do they come to this festival often is it their first time so um, like i hadn't actually been to this festival prior right okay. however i was very aware of it okay um because i've been to tech fest quite a few times oh yeah yeah uh, I like prog music, uh, I like post metal, math, Right. Yeah. so I was aware of it through my friends and some of my other bandmates and stuff, so, uh, and lately actually, have if you, if you been to it quite a few times? Uh, last year was my first. Okay, so last like, but from first. what I've noticed, like prior to that, they began to bring in like, just more metal, Right. what I would just call like, just four metal heads, yeah, like sure, yeah. bands like... You know, they had Rivers of Nihil last yeah. year and like they've got sick and enslaved. Yeah. They're metal bands, man. Like yeah. Yeah. whereas my perception and they had my sugar headline one year, I think, That's here, right. right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas my perception of it was a bit more like, oh, it's just like instrumental post rock and math, which is cool, but like I would I wouldn't go to a festival for that. Maybe not. Whereas yeah, yeah like yeah. where I listen to it but I wouldn't spend three hundred quid and go. No. Whereas like this, you go, Oh fuck, okay, my sugar enslaved sick the ocean nice like yeah and then i'm in and i would probably would appreciate some other shit that i wouldn't necessarily go and see but i might listen to at home and be like oh that's nice i was just watching uh, chinese football who um i like i know really happy post rock oh, uh, okay, there, nice. there was a guy in my camp um one of my best mates who was really hyping them up to me and i mean i don't i couldn't see myself ever buying a ticket to go see them yeah. individually but on a bill like this it was just fantastic and that's what festival's meant to be about right right. so you know whereas when it gets too big yeah like my partner went to download um like just they went we didn't get to actually go to it properly um for the whole thing but they said that it's so big that you can't actually do the thing at a festival that you want which is go oh yeah 
you know, oh, should we go and watch Guar or like whatever? And you just, like you just can't move around the site because mm-hmm. it's so fucking busy. So it's like it takes away a little bit from what no, festival is. I always thought Tech Fest was a really good festival. Do you that. tend to go down better at certain festivals more than others? Do you find it in Pupil Slicer? What I love about Pupil Slicer is that we can play tons of festivals. Yeah. Um, we, we, it's not announced yet. Well, I won't say what it is, but we have got we have been booked for a hardcore festival. Okay. I'm quite looking forward to playing that right. because I'm like, guys, we're not playing any post rock at this. <laughs> like, put those put those long ones down. We're just gonna do the hard shit, like you know. But to your question. Um, because of Kate's gone on record on stage and, and with interviews and stuff about saying how important Art Tangent is to them that kind of feels like and now that we've played it twice and we've been asked to come back you know I think hopefully we get asked to come back again so maybe that becomes a bit of a home yeah I think it's, it's nice for bands to feel like they have a, a home away from home when they're um, playing different places and yeah. different countries yeah um, oh, that's great. That's really cool. Um, if you weren't playing chaotic music, what genre do you think you'd be leaning towards? I, mean, I know you talked oh, about hip hop earlier, but oh, okay. So what if I had like just total free reign? Yeah, like um, um, I, mate, like I, I love all sorts of music. And pl- I've tried to play and play all sorts of music. So what I'd really like is what well, I'd love to play in something that's like the level of Dream Theater because that's a full time job. Yeah. You know, like playing that level, that with that level of proficiency. Um, I saw them in Birmingham Symphony Hall because I was. I was Mate, like, I went to that gig. Were you there on the oh, Images and Words? Yeah, thing. yeah. Yes, oh, oh, that this was, was fucking um, brilliant gig. This was a few was, months ago. Yeah, I was I was working it and I was just blown away. It's first time I'd seen them, and I, I know ticket prices were like I was very lucky to get to to review that and just take it all in. But wow. <laughs> Wow. So uh, for me, right, phenomenal. like I know the vocals aren't for everyone, and I accept that, right. But like, I w- and I have this argument with people constantly because metalheads love ripping on drinking, <laughs> right? But ultimately, like, yeah, yeah, that level of proficiency is no joke. It's serious, and yeah. it's for me personally really inspiring. Um, but like, then at the other end of that, I just love to play some like really tough hardcore or some grind. Yeah. Um, likewise, if I could play bass in, as like part of a live hip hop band, or even like more as part of like a, an artist's band, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, that would be amazing. Like I've been trying to learn blues a bit. That's a bit of a hole in my knowledge. Um, so, mate, I like. I just love playing all types of music, you know. And I've tried. I'd like to think that like doing all of that. It's like makes my bass playing way more interesting yes. in pupil slicer than it yes. than it is just like in your average male bass playing, hopefully. I'm, and the chili peppers, I'm, I love I'm them. I'm like so. primarily a guitarist, but if I'm playing non-metal, uh, so I've done that in like function bands or whatever, oh, I'd rather have. I'd rather be on the bass because I feel like there's so much more free reign and it kind of suits my own playing style a little bit more. Um, but I don't know, like if I was in a big band, that would be a completely different ballpark. Like. It's hard, man, yeah. like, to yeah. kind of get the bass out there in metal. It is. But, um, still. Yes, let's, still let's, let's talk a little bit about Pupil Slicer. I know that you've, you've only just released Blossom. Yeah. Second album in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, are you thinking about a third full length? Or it's an interesting long. question. Uh, we're not sure at the moment if we're going to do an EP or do like another album. There is some material knocking about yeah. that we've been jamming a bit and again it varies quite a lot because some of it is quite hardcore, some of it is post metal, Yeah. there's a bit of black metal in there yeah. and I said uh, to Kate earlier um, I really want to get some tall rip off going in Slicer um, because Blossom is quite proggy but in like a we're gonna do loads like section 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 kind of thing right whereas uh i think another element of being progressive that i'd like the band to explore is by doing it more in the way that tool do it yeah so have like a really cool bass line that lays down a thing and build but not in like the way that post metal does because that can be quite like slow sure 
you know what I mean? Yeah. It's still yeah. got to have that pupil size, that identity, but... And still be fun and interesting, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. yeah, so, mate, who knows? We've got... We're still in the process of doing all the shows for this uh, yeah. album, man, so we right. haven't really had much time to uh, just sit down and play stuff together yet, so, yeah. So I know that there's the um, there's a trend at the moment, um, bands releasing more short-form uh, releases, and I know that you did singles and EPs prior to your first record, but, um, uh, yeah, it just, it's cool that you said, no, we're going to do two full-length albums and... Oh, I see what you're getting at. Yeah. Right, so, because it's um, it's interesting. Like when I was speaking to say Bus last weekend, he was like, "Oh no, that wouldn't work for us. We do long songs. Our fans want long songs. But that's fair enough." But I feel like if you want to do some, if people size want to do something very left field, you could put that on an EP. Yes, true. Um, it depends like when we begin to bunch it up together, yeah. how it feels. But I do, you're, I do agree with you in your point in that it's good to just create bodies of work yeah. and just have that there because you know people remember albums yeah they do like they are landmarks and statements whereas it's got to be a truly fucking exceptional EP to exist outside of the history of that band make sense? yeah I know exactly what you mean I mean I'm thinking of Jar of Flies Ballast and Chains right now as one that really stands out in my all the, the Mike Patton Dillinger Escape Plan one. Right, yeah. That's an EP, I think. R and yeah. is a dead scene. But yeah, but they're they're exceptional, no? Yeah. So release them at exceptional rather than just any old. If it's if it's going to be an EP, I mean, like because then it becomes its currency. I feel is more so than within purely within the ecosystem of that band's discography. Whereas if you keep doing albums. They, they exist more widely than just outside the specific people that care about your bands. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. So that's quite a technical answer, but like, that's how I sort of view it, you know? Not at all, not at all. Um, what's your drink of choice for this weekend? Oh, nice. Uh, well, at the moment, I've only got water because I've been in the sauna <laughs> right, before yeah. I started these interviews, yeah. um, and they gave me a bottle of water. But nice. um, I've got some scotch, which I plan on drinking a bit of tonight. Actually, Hidden Mothers, someone told me, they've got a cider on. Okay. They've done a collaboration. Interesting. So, I'm that, this is the Hidden Mothers cider, I'm going to try and go and get a pint after I've done this. There you go. If that's not an endorsement, then I don't know what is. Big up, um, the, big up the boys from Shit. <laughs> um, it's been really nice to speak to you. And, yeah, um, likewise, I want man. to thank you for your time. Likewise. Uh, I really enjoyed the set yesterday, and it was... Um, well, thanks for watching it, Yeah, dude. I, 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 like, I like how it's kind of moving in a direction like it wasn't the same thing as last year oh is it really it was yeah that's good for me i'm, I'm trying seeing, to grow I'm it sensing the evolution so nice it's cool. good man always keep moving absolutely right absolutely right well i don't want to take too much of your time but um this was people slicer at arc tangent with the razor's edge thanks for listening Make sure you keep up to date with future episodes by subscribing to our channels. For more information on this podcast, or for all the latest music news, reviews, interviews and more, head over to our website, www.therazorsedge.rocks.